Hi Booktube, it's Stephanie. Today I decided that I wanted to join the ranks of people talking about the Times 100 Best Fantasy Books of All Time lists. Now the main reason why I wanted to talk about this was because the majority, as in like, actually as I'm filming this, 100% of them, the reaction videos and discussion videos or and rant videos they are hilarious have been from us booktubers or uk booktubers not really the rest of the world and just watch that as soon as i have edited this video there will be a lot more but i can say that from a swede or a person who does not live in the us and uk it doesn't surprise me <laughs> like the choices of books well i have not heard about several of them and it's pretty funny when i hear oh yeah that's a classic yeah sure and i'm like okay never heard of it because i that's from another point of view i have other types of classics that i would refer to when it comes to fantasy and that's just how it is but yeah, it has been hilarious to watch all reactions. <laughs> so if we just start from some basic point of view, um, just looking at, well, a couple of factors. One, Time Magazine, US based. The panelist, all but one, US authors. And 87 of the 100 books are by US or UK authors as i could find in the cases where i was kind of unsure or yeah i was unsure of how to judge it i basically took okay where were the book published us or uk 87 of 100 books and of all these 100 books four of them were translated two of them the Arabian Nights and the death of author, I will not try to pronounce that in French. They were the oldest classics on the list. The other two were one from a Chinese author and one from an Argentinian. I really want to say that in Swedish. Sorry, it's over midnight. Life. So, yeah. I can tell you that I did not really expect diversity when it came to where the books came from, like at all. I expected to see books from US and UK, mostly US, which was true because the majority of the books are from the US, but I did not expect any diversity when it come, came to that. And it actually bugged me a bit when people said, well, at least it's a diverse list. Um, it's a diverse list when you look at the race of the people on the list. But I would not classify this as a diverse list. Not when only two of the books that were published after 1901 were translated. Uh, to me, that's not a diverse list. And I have, in a lot of rants, people are mentioned, for instance, the Witcher series should have been on, etc., etc. And that obviously would have been, uh, been translated. But it just shows um, what people think of as diverse. I was happy to see several of the books on this list that, have, that had different... Um, cultural backgrounds and religion and things like that but I would still not call this a diverse list because 87-ish of the books UK and US so if we just go to some of my own statistics I have read 18 of the books I have 14 on my TBR that I own which are represented by the books behind me including um, the three uh, books in the um, Lord of the Rings 
because I want to be with them. So I put them back there to get more stacks. Uh, and then I have 19 books that I want to read in general from this list. So from my point of view, and due to the fact that I want to read several of the books and I've read some of them, it's a pretty good list. My main issue with it personally, and from what I understand a lot of other people's main issue, is that apparently 43 of the books that are very influential in fantasy were all published 2010 and later. And eight of them were published 2019 and two of them 2020. There is no way that you can tell that these books will have, uh, have impact. You have no idea of knowing that today. They might be. It might be that in 10 years, all these books are still talked about, or still um, really, oh, these are must read books. But you can't know that when a book has been out for about two months. And that personally irritated me. <laughs> But, and luckily and very happily, I was not the only one who felt like that. Otherwise, I would have felt really left out. But I feel like one thing that would have made this list better would be if they said, we will only take books that were published before 2015 or 2010. Or there are like, I don't know what, uh, what year would have been the best to end on. But they started this process in 2019 and I could agree with the 2019 books, kind of, because arcs are being sent out and a lot of authors do get to read books in advance to blurb them or things like that. So yeah, but impact on the fantasy genre to influence, uh, to influence it. You have no idea. And one thing that I also noticed now when we're talking a little bit about numbers is that I was curious how many books have been on other award lists. And I decided to look up the World Fantasy Award. And the first book, uh, that one started 1975. And the first two books that shows up on that award list is Good Omens and Tigana, who were both, both nominated 2000, 2000, 1991 uh, because they came out in 1990. Before that, there are 85 books and none of them are, met, are on this list. So those are the, my personal opinion of the list as a, as a whole. But if we go in a little bit more um, into the books, there are what books would I have put on this list um, just because. And a lot of people have mentioned The Border Scrim, yes. And then I would like to add H.C. Um, Anderson. Uh, he wrote a bunch of fairy tales. One of the most famous one that I would be very doubtful that you have not heard about being the little mermaid and then definitely probably um, if since i feel like i have to go classic <laughs> uh, we have i did look it up just before now the wondrous journey adventure or journey of nils uh, i'm just gonna look that up real quick again okay the Wondrous Adventures of Nils by Selma Lagerlöf. Um, and then we have Astrid Lindgren. Um, if we go really light fantasy, we have People on Sunking. And if we go a little bit more, we have Bordes Lionheart. Um, and then we have Miu Mi Miu, which probably is just translated to Miu My Miu. Probably, I have no idea. Um, for fantasy. Definitely those. I unfortunately have not really read too much into the rest of Europe's, except for UK's fantasy background. So I can't really right here now say any more books, but 
yeah those are definitely some that i would have added in probably not all of astrid lindgren's books or those three that i mentioned but definitely probably burden's lion heart and people long stalking at least when we come to swedish fantasy life in general i also realized that i forgot one book that should have well two books that should be on this list based on what people say and what people think the first one being the lightning thief by uh, rick riordan you can't say that he has not affected fantasy and it's kind of feels weird that a book from his imprint made it on the list but he, one of his books did not make it on the list so that was definitely one that i would make and then one that people are signing over the fact that they kind of have to add and that would be twilight you can't say that it wasn't influential you can't say it wasn't popular and you can't like you can't say that it didn't affect fantasy then for some thoughts about the books in general and uh, i will link a very funny rant video it's a reaction to the fact that the one discworld book on this list is the we free men it's pretty funny i will link it down below it's by alan from the library of alexandria it's really funny but i reacted pretty similar when i saw that osma falls was on this list like excuse you <laughs> i've read all those books um when i was pretty young and then i reread them in well, not all of them, but I reread several of them in graphic novel form. Would highly recommend it. They were great. Osma of Oz. The Wizard of Oz, yes. There is not that many who even realize that there are more than one Oz book. Like, Osma of Oz, really? My personal favorite would be, and right now, I Return to Oz, I think it is. I think it's Return to Oz right now, I'm blanking, but if I say like this, Talking Chicken, well, Talking Hen, technically, that's my favorite of them. So, Ask My Voss, really? Uh-uh. And then there are two more that I reacted towards, and the first one, because it's the fastest, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban is on this list. Personally, I cannot agree. It's my favorite Harry Potter book. But Philosopher's Stone is not on this list. Like the first Harry Potter book had way more of an impact than the third one. And then my second point, and this one I'm slightly shading for. And that's the f uh, top book that I have over here. And just because of that. Now this book Legends on the Concor uh, Condor Heroes 1, A Hero Born by Jin Yang. It's pretty fun that it's on this list. This is also one of the four translated works. But this was translated to English in 2018. And it was written, and it, it then got revised, but it was written in uh, 1959. So... It's on this list and it's great that it is because from what I read about it this is like a classic in Chinese fantasy it's highly regarded it has been made many movies and things like that about it but I can't help being like yeah but this one who's so important to a Chinese audience it would I'm not going to say 100, but I'm tempted to say 100. It would not have made this list unless it had been translated to English. And this is one of the reasons why I would have preferred to have a panel from different countries that doesn't all have the English speaking background so that they would have to motivate why they put books on the lists so this one made me go a little bit uh-huh why did you put it on the list so yeah those are my thoughts pretty random 
but I didn't feel like repeating myself from what a lot of people have said. Um, but I can say that from someone who's not from the US or UK, this list or the reactions to this list has been hilarious. <laughs> um, and obviously there are feelings behind it. There will always be that for lists like this. 100, that's not a lot of books when you consider how many books comes out every year. And yeah. Honestly, I feel like if they really would have wanted this many more present day books, because there are too many of them, um, 43 of them, they could have said books published after 1950. That would have given them like, I think it was like nine books more that they could have played around with and maybe added in some before 2010. Uh, because there were not a lot of books before 1950s that they added on this list. So they could just have skipped that. And then people would still have said that it was pretty repetitive because Lord of the Rings would have made it on the list. But that's the problem with lists like this when you have it through time. It's not through time because that's impossible. There will always be people who are being annoyed by it or things like that. And the easiest thing that they could have done, except for having like a time limit, either, as I said, set the end date and say 2015 or a, a date, let's say, from 1950, which would, from what I understand, is what modern fantasy is considered as. They could just have focused on US books. They had over 50 of US authors on this list. They could have just focused on having authors from the US. And I think at least from my point of view, it would have not felt as shady from all the books that they are not putting on it from the rest of the world. But that's just opinions and that's what everything is really and that was really corny ah well it's now 1 a.m i need to go to bed please tell me your thoughts down below and i will see you next time bye